What do Lamborghini, Twitter, the International Olympic Committee, Julian Assange and the WWF have in common? They're all getting involved in non-fungible tokens. I hope I'm pronouncing that right as I look at our Tech24 editor, Peter O'Brien. <laughs> it seems that every day another high-profile individual or organisation is dipping their toe into this controversial digital art market. And here to explain... How we got to this point is uh, Peter O'Brien. OK, so first of all, obvious question, what is an NFT? How do we pronounce it and what does it all mean? Right, so non-fungible tokens may sound complicated, but they're actually fairly simple. So when you buy an NFT, you're essentially buying a web link that usually points to a bit of media, whether it be a photo or a short clip of video or something else. Now, the important thing is, like anything digital, this bit of media can always be copied or even deleted or modified, but the link you own to it by buying the NFT remains yours forever. Now, usually you need to buy this using cryptocurrency, but in fact, recently, MasterCard have said they'll be supporting the, the purchase of NFTs as well. Peter, this uh, first NFT was uh, minted almost eight years ago. Why is there this sudden explosion of interest all these years onwards? Yeah, so on Tech24, some you know, we hope to talk about new technologies, but sometimes we just need to talk about technology which everyone is talking about. And for me, this the, the big idea around NFTs at the moment, at least, is that it's a great source of publicity and money. So it's a way for globally recognized individuals and brands to earn a quick buck and some notoriety. So naturally, the whole thing has snowballed and we've seen all of these brands you mentioned getting involved. But there are risks. So brands are risking their reputations. Some people say they're delving into a world which is used for theft, money laundering and criminality. And others condemn, of course, the impact that cryptocurrency has on the environment. It's no wonder that the WWF has faced significant backlash for its non-fungible animals tokens, even though they say the crypto it's based on is eco-friendly. Now, by Buyers are also taking a huge risk when they purchase NFTs. Most people, in fact, buy NFTs not because the artwork itself is particularly good, but usually because they're hoping it will go up in value. So that means that even the top NFT collections, which are holding their value actually fairly well, at this moment could come down crashing at any point. Let's hope for Justin Bieber's sake that this monkey he bought for $1.3 million is in fact worth that much. It does sound like a bit of a wild, wild west, this whole new um, technology, but money and publicity can of course be good for the artists of these NFTs. People say that's one of their uh, the clear benefits. Yeah, that's 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 always cited as, as one of the benefits. And we've seen a small number of artists get fabulously wealthy off the back of NFTs, but many others say that they're being taken advantage of. There's a huge amount of stolen artwork on the NFT trading platform OpenSea, despite its policy banning plagiarized content. In fact, the digital art community DeviantArt has sent more than 80,000 alerts to its users saying their artwork may have been resold on open sea. And it's not just visual artists, it's musicians as well. A website called Hit Piece, um, it was taken down after musicians complained that it was selling work without their, but without their permission. Hit Piece appears in fact to have been based on Spotify's software and it listed countless, of songs, countless songs as NFTs. Of course, if you were to buy one of those, you'd be buying the idea of a song rather than the song itself, but it was still enough to rile the music industry. Peter, finally, NFTs are increasingly popping up in the world of video games, aren't they? That's right. So at NFT Paris, an event uh, here in Paris last month, we talked to Sebastian Bourget, who's developing a video game called The Sandbox, which incorporates NFTs. Let's have a listen to his vision. On est un gaming metaverse ouvert, dans lequel les utilisateurs vont pouvoir créer des assets 3D, des expériences, et les monétiser grâce aux NFT. On a lancé le mois dernier euh, notre première saison Play to Earn qui euh, bah, a permis de donner un petit aperçu de ce qu'est le métavers et de la diversité, la richesse des expériences qu'on va pouvoir y trouver et aussi la manière dont les gens peuvent transformer leur temps, leur engagement en token, en NFT et euh, gagner un, une nouvelle forme de revenu. So the idea is really almost utopian, this idea that you can have fun playing a game and make money while you, while you do it. Well, the idea is called earn to, a play to earn, rather, and there's one game which has already become very famous for this idea. It's called Axie Infinity, and the idea is that you 
buy NFT critters and you sell them as well using cryptocurrency and you use them to fight Pokemon style. Now, unfortunately for many users, it's become less like a game and more really like a minimum wage job. You have ringleaders actually employing people from countries like Indonesia and Venezuela to work for them, grinding out days and days on the game and earning in-game currency. Now, this currency is called Smooth Love Potion. And as, as you can see here, well, it's lost a lot of value. So that means it's a lot harder to make a living working on the game. And, you know, it might be might be potentially better than working in a sweatshop, but one thing's for sure, it's not very much fun uh, working for 18 hours a, a, a day on this game.